Let's try an optimization problem together. For this problem, we have an offshore whale that's going to be located in the ocean at point W. Now we're told that it's going to be six miles from the closest shore point, which is going to be point A on a straight shoreline. So here's that distance of six miles. And this is the straight shoreline that is the closest distance because it is a perpendicular line to it. Now point W is six miles from point A. So point A must be located right here. Now the oil is going to be piped to a shore point B and that is going to be eight miles away from point A. So we know we're going to put point B maybe somewhere over here along the shoreline and go ahead and label that as B. So between A to B, that's going to be eight miles. It looks like they want to create a pipeline that's going to be a straight line that's going to be underwater and it's going to go from point W to some shore point of P here. We know it's got to be between point A and point B somewhere along the shoreline. So here is our underwater pipeline that's going to land somewhere on the shoreline between A and B. Let's just put it here for now. Now where it connects to the shoreline, we're going to go ahead and call point P. So I'm going to go ahead and call this location P here. So this is going to be the underwater pipeline from here to here. And then this is going to be the rest of the pipeline going along the shoreline from point P to point B. So there are going to be two costs here. It's going to cost $100,000 per mile for the pipeline that's underwater then it's also going to be costing $75,000 per mile for the overland part of the pipeline, which makes sense because the underwater part is going to be more expensive to make because it's more difficult. So the question is, is how far from point A should point P be located so that we can minimize the cost of laying this pipe? Once we figure that out, we can go ahead and see how much that cost is actually going to be. All right, so hopefully we can visualize the scenario just a little bit better with this picture. And let's go ahead and add in a few more details. Now we know that this entire distance from A to B is going to be this eight miles. So let's go ahead and call just part of it from uh, A to P, let's just call that X. So X is gonna be representing the distance from A to P. So if that's X, then what is P to B gonna be? Well, P to B is just going to be eight minus whatever X is, right? It depends on what X's value is. Also, let's go ahead and label this distance of the underwater pipeline. I'm gonna call that Y for now. I think that's all the details we wanted to add into the picture, so let's get into writing some equations. First, notice this right triangle. And from that, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to set up an equation and say that adding the square of AW to the square of AP is going to equal the square of WP. Substituting in the 6 and X and Y, we're going to get 6 squared plus X squared is equal to Y squared. And so we can write that the 6 squared is 36 plus X squared plus Y squared. And then if we go ahead and take the square root of both sides, we can isolate this y variable and say that y is equal to the square root of x squared plus 36. All right, so there's one equation. Now let's talk about the cost. The total cost of this pipeline is going to be equal to the cost of the underwater pipeline plus the cost of the pipeline along the shore. All right, so for the total cost, let's go ahead and say that's going to be c. So I'm going to say c is equal to now for the cost of the pipeline underwater, we know it's going to be 100,000 per mile. And how many miles is it going to be? Well, it's going to be Y miles. So let's go ahead and say it's going to be 100,000 per each of those. So when it's a per, we're just going to go ahead and multiply. So 100,000 multiplied by Y plus what? Now for the cost of the pipeline along the shore, we know it's going to be $75,000 per each of the miles on land. Now how many miles are going to be on land? Well, that's going to be 8 minus X miles here. So writing that in, it's going to be this $75,000 $75, per each of those miles on land. And the amount of miles on land is going to be 8 minus whatever the X is. So this right here is going to be our cost equation. And we're going to see if we can go ahead and minimize this cost. Now notice this variable y over here, and let's go ahead and make a quick substitution so we only have one variable of x in our equation on the right side. So substituting in, this is what we're getting right over here. So this is gonna be the cost equation we're going to be using, and before we go ahead and take the derivative to find the minimal cost of laying the pipe, let's go ahead and just rewrite this part here so it's a little bit easier to take the derivative of. So now that we have the radical in exponential form, let's go ahead and take the derivative. So the derivative of this cost function is going to be equal to this 100,000 that we're just going to put in front over here. And let's go ahead and use that power rule so that one half is going to come down in front and multiply. So let's go ahead and say this is going to be times one half here. Then we're going to go ahead and leave this inside alone of x squared plus 36. 
Then taking away one from this power of one half, that's gonna to be to the negative one half power. And then don't forget to take the derivative of the inside here. So the derivative of x squared plus 36 is just going to be 2x. So let's go ahead and multiply this by 2x. Now for the derivative of the second part here, let's go ahead and say it's going to be 75,000 multiplied by the derivative of inside here, which is just going to be negative 1. So it's going to be uh, negative 1 times 75,000. So it's minus 75,000. And I'm running out of little space here, but I think that's going to be okay just because then we're going to take this 8 minus x and multiply it by the derivative of 75,000, which is just 0. So we're not going to have to write anything there. Okay, so this is the derivative, but let's go ahead and just clean this up a little bit. If we take this first term and we take this 100,000 and we take half of it, that's going to be 50,000. And then 50,000 multiplied by this uh, 2x, that's going to be 100,000x. So this is going to be 100,000 x and it's going to be multiplied by whatever we didn't touch yet which is going to be this expression here so that's going to be this x squared plus 36 raised to the negative one half power and then let's go ahead and take away 75,000. all right now rewriting this part using a positive exponent and going back into radical form we can write this negative fractional exponent in the denominator using a radical all right, so now that we've cleaned this up a little bit, let's go ahead and see if we can optimize this by setting the derivative equal to zero, because that's going to be one of our critical points. So let's go ahead and set this derivative equal to zero. All right, so once we have set it equal to zero, let's go ahead and solve this equation for x to let us know when we're going to be able to optimize this amount of cost. So first, let's go ahead and add 75,000 to both sides. And if we do that, we're going to have $75,000 is going to be equal to this expression on the right. And then if we multiply both sides by the square root of x squared plus 36, we're going to get that 75,000 times the square root of x squared plus 36 is equal to that 100,000 x on the right. Then if we go ahead and divide both sides by 25,000, we're going to get 3 multiplied by the square root of x squared plus 36 on the left side, and that's going to equal this 4x on the right side. Then if we go ahead and square both sides, we're going to end up with 9 multiplied by the quantity of this x squared plus 36 on the left, and that's just going to equal 16x squared along the right. Then if we go ahead and distribute this 9, we're going to get 9x squared plus 324 is equal to 16x squared. So then we can go ahead and subtract 9x squared from both sides and find that 7x squared is equal to 324. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by 7. And it doesn't go in evenly, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep it as an improper fraction. And so finally, when we take the square root of both sides here, we're going to get that x is going to be equal to plus or minus uh, roughly 6.803. So what does this mean? These are the two critical points, plus or minus 6.803, where the cost is going to be minimized. Now keep in mind that we can't get a negative distance for x, so we're going to just use the positive version. So let's go back and look and see what's going on with our problem. Now remember that x is the distance from here to here, which is going to be from point A to point P. That's x right over here. And so we just found out that distance is about 6.803 miles. So to answer that question of how far from point A should point P be for minimizing the cost, we can conclude that to minimize the cost, point P should be about 6.803 miles from point A. Now there's one more part of this question, which is what is that actual cost going to be? We're going to go ahead and take our cost equation from earlier and substitute this 6.803 in for x in both of these locations so that we can find out that cost. All right, so if we go ahead and do that, we're going to get this equation right here. And then if we go ahead and just plug in this entire right side into a calculator, we should get that the cost is approximately 996,862.70. So what this tells us is that the minimal cost for the pipeline in the water and on the shoreline is going to be $996,862.70 in total. All right, so that just about wraps up this optimization problem. If you found the video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing with a classmate or friend who might also find it helpful. And as always, keep up the great work that you're already doing, and I'll see you in the next one.